You're watching the Hoops 8 High School Basketball Preview Show with Sports Director Travis Lee on Channel 8 WMTW. All right, let's take a look at some of the top girls' individual efforts of the season. How about Delaney Haynes of Deering? 28 points against Noble. Mackenzie Holmes, member of the 1,000-point club as a junior, 28 in a big win over Scarborough the last time the Red Storm lost. Faith Bleth in the George Washington commit, helping Booth Bay to a number one seed at 26 against Lisbon. And Andrew DeWolf, a scoring machine at Greeley, 31 against a good defensive York team. Welcome back. We start with Class C boys, and the tournament has been the George Stevens Academy show the last two years. GSA will go for the first three-peat and C since Falmouth did it 20 years ago. There should be plenty of competition, though, coming from the south. Hallsdale is the number one seed. The Bulldogs are deep and can win playing different styles. Ashton Abbott and Alec Byron are two of the premier players in the tournament. Despite graduating talent from last year's state finals team, Winthrop's the two seed. The Ramblers' guard play is improving, and Cam Wood at 6'8 has had a tremendous season. Wayne Fleet closed the season on a 12-game win streak. The Flyers are athletic and boast one of the top shooters around in Dereg De Gea. Dirigo has state championship experience in Cooper Chasen and Luke Luders, who have both been four-year players. And the Cougars are the only team to beat top seed Haldale. All right, we bring back Michael Hoffer to talk Class C boys. And not to be a forgotten, I.J. Pinkham's Booth Bay team, five straight wins, but they're not even close to the hottest team coming into this C tournament. No, Wayne Fleet red hot, 12 wins in a row, and they played seven Class B South teams this year, Travis. Won four of those games, and the three losses were all close. This team is very, very dangerous. They know how to win in Augusta. And uh, the one thing this group hasn't accomplished is winning that gold ball, but this could, this could be the team that gets over the hump. Obviously, Haldale having a fantastic season. Uh, they're the favorites for good reason. And then you've got the Winthrops and Dirigos and Richmonds and Booth Bays of the world. Seems like they're always up there in Augusta uh, being a factor, but I'm really going to keep a close eye on the Flyers because I think they have a great shot to go very deep. All right, thank you. Zach Small coming out of Richmond, the player of the year. He is going to be one of the better players in that tournament. All right, the Class C girls tournament featuring two of the five unbeaten teams in the state. Holton, which played in the last three states, championship games and the girls from Booth Bay. Booth Bay is the number one seed. The Seahawks have all the ingredients of a title contender. They're athletic and long and Paige Bryan and Faith Blethen give the Booth Bay the top two players in the tournament. Monmouth's the defending state champ. Scott Wing's team is deep and has two proven playoff performers in Tia Day and Abby Allen. Old Orchard has one of the best point guards around in Brianna Plant. The Seagulls half-court defense is legit. They had the toughest schedule of anyone in the tournament, but still only gave up 33 points per contest. All right, talking Class C girls, we bring back our one-man panel, Michael Hoffer of the Forecaster for this one. Uh, Michael, this is uh, Booth Bay's uh, tournament, it looks like. Yeah, but you know, there is a lot of pressure going in at 18-0, and, and that's a team that's certainly capable of handling it. Monmouth, of course, has the experience from last year, so they're certainly capable of a very deep run. But, uh, you know, kudos to Old Orchard Beach for what they've accomplished, and they're, like you mentioned, a very stingy defensive team, and I think that we're going to be hearing from them over the next week or two, and I think they're capable of going very deep. Look out for the uh, Seagulls. Absolutely. Coach Blethen told me this week that Booth Bay has tried to have fun, make it fun this year, and it has certainly look, looked uh, like they've had fun at 18-0. Now, how good as Booth Bay been during the Paige Brown era? Well, nothing less than 18 wins a year. The seniors record 74 and 6 and 18 and 0 this year. Now for basketball fans in Maine, there's the age old refrain of how else would you survive the winter? When asked about the affection they have for high school hoops, this adage is multiplied when multiple kids in a family play the game. Over the next few weeks, the drama of the tournament will take families across the state on a suspenseful ride. A ride these younger siblings of big basketball families are well versed in. The game is a ritual. And for many Maine basketball players, it's a ritual they've watched older siblings repeat over and over again. Handed down the line in the driveway, the rec league, the playground, until it's their turn to take the court under the spotlight. But it all started with their first teammates, their brothers and their sisters. I mean, there's always somebody to rebound for, rebound for you. Give you a lollipop, you know, give him 50 shots. As a little kid, I used to like me and me and my brother Quan used to go to um, Mundre South down there in my house, and we used to like play basketball. We used to play for like push-ups and stuff, so it was pretty competitive. When I was growing up, my uh, Alex and his friends would always be playing pickup in our driveway like every day. Thea would be out there with him and stuff. I kind of have to wait my turn to play on the hoop, but whenever that would happen, I mean, they'd play for hours, and then whenever they take a break, me and my sisters would go play. 
Meet Finn Bovey, the fifth of six basketball playing siblings in Cape Elizabeth. Teron Moss, the third of his brothers to play hoops at Portland High. Camille Clement, the third of three hoops playing sisters. And John Verano, the seventh of eight siblings to play hoops at Wayne Fleet. While their journeys to high school basketball are different, there are remarkable similarities. Well, with a big family, uh, skiing was out of, out of the budget, so uh, we had to find something for the kids to do in the winter. The term sibling rivalry has no better fit than when siblings share the court. I definitely wouldn't be as competitive if it wasn't for my sisters. I mean, whether it's first to jump in the water or um, who's going to win in one-on-one. -on -one. To Hoops fans, these players' names conjure memories of their older siblings, and rivals beg for the end of the line. People realize, oh, like, you're a Bovey too? Like, oh, you're the last one? I'm like, no, it's another one. There's, there's a lot. When I was playing with my Matchbox cars at the Augusta Civic Center or wherever my siblings were playing, I'd hear over the, the loudspeaker, Margaret Veronu, Veroni, the name would pronounce it right, but by the time I was here, I mean, I've never heard it mispronounced. Teron Moss can claim the rarest of sibling achievements in the sport as he won a championship with his brother Amir two years ago. Their coach was eyewitness to the type of bond that only teammates who are siblings can have. When Amir and Teron were playing together, and if, if Teron was maybe not passing the ball like he should, he would give Teron this little glare, and it was like Teron knew. So there was a, a very respectful relationship between those two. The younger of basketball siblings might not have any say in the beginning of the sport, but staying in the sport is another matter. And older siblings have a keen eye for seeing their brother or sister fall in love with the game. It's sort of been in her blood and it's been taught to her, but also there comes a point where it, it's her choice. It's not parents are signing you up for a team anymore. Um, and it's been really fun to watch her play high school basketball because she's having a lot of fun. And I noticed that she's really developing like her own love for the game. A high school basketball life is fleeting. And no one knows this quite like the parents who see it all go by so fast. This is what we do in the winter. You know, we're in the gym. We're, our kids are in the gym six to, you know, six out of the seven days a week, if not all seven. Um, and it's, it's just, it's a lot of fun. I mean, there's a lot of pride involved, <clears throat> but we just really love the game. And so it, it's just fun to watch them play. Oh, isn't that the truth? Moving along to Class B boys and up in the north, Herman ran the table with an 18-0 record. But down south, no team in the tournament has fewer than five losses, and the top seed has six losses. The defending regional champs from Wells are in the top spot behind a consistent guard-forward combo in Matt Sherburn and Cam Cousins. Cape Elizabeth has the most dangerous scorer in the tournament in senior Finn Bovey. And good size inside with Andrew Hartel and solid perimeter threats. Yarmouth likes to use its defense to fuel its offense behind shot blocking and rebounding machine Nolan Haggerty. The Clippers are capable of scoring in big spurts. Spruce Mountain lost three of its last five, but Brett Fry, Mason Schink, and Cale Stewart are all capable of taking over games. All right, let's talk Class B boys. Michael Hoffer, the forecaster, rejoins me. And Michael, throw all the names in a hat and see what comes out. Yeah, I think we might see some surprises, and it's funny. I mean, Wells, for a one seed, isn't getting much attention, but they're certainly capable of winning it again. Uh, Cape Elizabeth, you talked about Finn Bovey, that wonderful feature on the siblings. He can score a lot of points, and he's big in big spots. I think Nolan Haggerty might be the most impactful individual in any class in this tournament, and if he goes off, look out for Yarmouth. They, they've been struggling for consistency. If they can put four good games together in a row, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Clippers take home a gold ball. All right, and Miranda Cook as well likes to run, 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 run. Sometimes it's the styles that make the fight, Michael. Absolutely. All right, moving on to Class B girls, and there won't be a third straight gray Holton title game in Class B. Holton dropped down to Class C, but the Patriots still have a chance to three-peat in the South. Gray's run to the number one seed was fueled by the Jordans. Point guard Brianna Jordan and post player Jordan Grant. Grant's 16 points a game makes her one of the top scoring threats in the tournament. Poland is more than just the Natalie Terrio show, although Terrio can do it all. The Knights' Jessica Seeley gets buckets too. Freeport can cause headaches with its pressure defense. Caroline Smith's one of the most complete players in the tournament, and Alex Goodman is an impact scorer. Lake Region is disciplined and tough. Lauren Jacobs and Chandler True give the Lakers a good 1-2 scoring punch. 
All right, bring Michael back in. And Michael, I think in this B South thing, uh, you've got a lot of teams that have some similarities. Yeah, and again, a very wide open tournament, very interesting tournament. Funny how we always seem to talk about Lake Region regardless of the year. Uh, uh, Gray New Gloucester, they're the defending champs. They finally got over that hump last year. They have what it takes to go back to back. Uh, Freeport has been my favorite story this year, seeing that program's resurgence. They've become a powerhouse. Uh, Allie Goodman's as good as any individual. The problem for the Falcons is they can't seem to figure out a way to beat Gray New Gloucester, and they're going to have to do that to get to the pinnacle. And Poland certainly capable of uh, making a deep run as well. Definitely, Michael. All right, that's going to be one of the best tournaments to watch, I think, no yeah. question. All right, what were some of the top performances of the year on the court? Well, let's check them out. How about Teron Moss of Portland putting up 40 on opening night against Noble? Nick Curtis means Steve Nash, the scorer, the playmaker, 21 points, 11 assists against Edward Little. Zach Small, the MVC Player of the Year. He put up 32 against a tough Deergo defensive team. And Nick Fiorillo, 38 against Kenny Bunk. We're going to talk double-A hoops when we come back on the tournament preview show.